Hello there guys, welcome to one of my live videos, so uh, I'm just going to give you some uh, news um, in regards uh, to uh, Mason Greenwood uh, that was circulating um, out of the media uh, yesterday. It has confirmed uh, that Mason Greenwood um, is missing uh, from the Manchester United squad uh, to face uh, West Ham, so it does mean um, in the aspect, you know, he hasn't uh, travelled uh, to London, you know, the rest um, of his uh, Manchester United uh, teammates. Also to Pogba and Anthony uh, Martial um, are missing, so we do know now that Mason Greenwood with, um, isn't going to be uh, playing uh, today um, against uh, West Ham. As Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did actually say, um, it, it would be um, impossible uh, to drop uh, Mason Greenwood. Um, you know, um, if he does, you know, uh, keep uh, scoring uh, goals. We do know Mason Greenwood um, had scored um, his first um, official uh, senior uh, goal uh, for the football club mid midweek. You know, with a one nil uh, win um, over um, FC um, Estonia um, in the uh, Europa League. But Solskjaer did actually say um, in his press conference that Mason Greenwood, you know, could uh, start uh, today um, against. Uh, West Ham because if he does uh, keep uh, the consistency up and that Solskjaer did assure you know that Mason Greenwood you know will uh, get uh, more uh, minutes um, under um, his belt and that um but yeah, it's confirmed um, he's not travelled uh, with the rest of the Manchester United squad. Um, I don't really know uh, the reason uh, for this. Maybe he's sustained some kind of injury, um, I do not know. But it, some good news is that Daniel James um, has travelled uh, with the rest um, of the Manchester United squad. So possibly, you know, Daniel James uh, could be um, involved uh, today. Uh, we do know Daniel James uh, did uh, miss uh, the 1-0 uh, uh, the game against FC Estania um, in the Europa League. Obviously, he sustained um, a knock um, in the 1-0 uh, victory um, against uh, Leicester. Obviously, you know, that was um, our uh, last uh, league game but I, I am hopeful you know that Daniel James you know can be um, involved because I think he's enjoyed um, a pretty uh, decent uh, well he's enjoyed a good start uh, to his uh, Manchester United career don't forget Daniel James um, has scored uh, three goals uh, so far uh, this season uh, so he, in that aspect he is joint top goal scorer um, alongside uh, Marcus Rashford so hopefully Daniel James you know can be involved today so he has travelled with Western Man United squad but it's not assured you know he will be um, involved um, in the game so there's a 50-50 chance that you know he will be involved we do know that Pogba and Anthony Martial obviously you know haven't uh, you know they're not with the rest of the Man United squad obviously we do know they're uh, out with injury uh, so too um, is Luke Shaw we do know Anthony Martial and Luke Shaw I think have missed the last three games for Manchester United obviously Martial has been out with a thigh injury uh, Luke Shaw um, has been uh, out with a hamstring injury um and we do know that Paul Pogba has been uh, out uh, with an ankle injury, so we still have uh, imperative uh, players um, out. And I didn't actually say, you know, I was hopeful, you know, that we had Pogba and Anthony Martial, you know, back uh, for uh, today. But it confirmed, well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer confirmed, you know, they will not uh, be uh, fully uh, fit. So obviously with the injuries and that, you know, obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is going to make um, alterations. Um, I do believe, obviously, he's going to play Aaron wan Bissaka today. He's going to play Harry Maguire. He's going to play Victor Lindelof and that, because obviously all of them, you know, were arrested, you know, for the game midweek um, against uh, FC Mestania but it was good you know that we did get the win uh, midweek um, against FC Mestania obviously it's good you know to get off to a good start um, in the Europe League you know winning 1-0 you know now we are uh, top um, of the group uh, we are aware that obviously you know AZ Alkmaar and you know parties in Belgrade are going to be much more tougher tests uh, than FC Mestania but it was good to see midweek you know more of the kids you know it was good to see the kids get getting more uh, playing time and obviously in that aspect you know gaining uh, more um, experience um, it wasn't the most convincing performance you know but as long as you know obviously you know we did uh, get uh, the win um but yeah, so it's confirmed Mason Greenwood, you know, will not be uh, playing uh, the game uh, today. But like I did say, I like Mason Greenwood um, a lot. And I think he's, you know, going to succeed um, at Manchester United, um, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. You know, he is um, only uh, 17 uh, years of age. Obviously, he's not yet, you know, played from the start um, in the Premier League as Mason Greenwood. And we do know, obviously, you know, when he's uh, demanded uh, more uh, playing time. Um, obviously, he did really, really well last season, though, for the reserves. You know, he scored 30 goals um, in 29 uh, games. And did initially say, you know, he, just, he should... Uh, start uh, today but he's not going to be now obviously you know because he hasn't uh, travelled uh, the rest um, of the Manchester United squad um, but we have got a lot of young players in the squad you know that are developing and um, trying to um, improve and I did say I, I credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the aspect you know he has got um, a lot of uh, trust with him um, and his uh, young um, upcoming players um, Chong obviously you know he made he made his first start from the start you know midweek um, against uh, you know FC um, Stanley and I do like Chong um, a lot we do know he's committing his future at Manchester United uh, for uh, this season obviously we do know it's actually said that Chon had been in negotiations with a football club um, over a new contract he reportedly said and um, reportedly he had received loan offers this summer you know from PSV and his former club Fernoid but you know he turned he turned them down and Chon and obviously remained uh, loyal uh, to uh, Manchester United so we do know he stayed at the club uh, for uh, at least uh, this season um 
like I said, Angel Gomez is going to be a big part of the squad this season. You know, obviously, you know, I think he made his uh, well made his first start. You know, um, in the one 0 win um, over uh, FC Estonia. Obviously, we do know that Angel Gomez um, is another one um, of our uh, midfield um, options. Um, I said Alex Tuanzebe. You know, he's going to be a big part of the squad this season. Don't forget, you know, he played uh, through uh, the week as well. Um, obviously, it's a, despite the fact that Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof are our first choice centre backs, you know, I still believe you know that um, you know Alex Tuanzebe you know, will get good giving him um, his um, opportunities. Uh, Diego Dalla, you know, he made his first appearance midweek. Um, obviously, he'd recently been out uh, with a grind problem, but now um, he has uh, recovered uh, from this grind problem um, as Diego Dalla. Uh, he's obviously, you know, one of our, uh, you know, backup uh, right-backs and that, because obviously, Anwan um, Bissaka is our uh, first-choice uh, right-back. Um... Uh, and we do have actually, you know, Phil Jones and Marcus Rojo, don't forget, you know, they made their first appearances uh, midweek and that. Um, so, yeah, Solskjaer made a hell of a lot of changes, you know, in the game um, against F FC Estani, I know, uh, midweek and that. But we do know, you know, we do know how much of a difficult game, you know, this is going to be today um, against uh, West Ham, you know. West Ham have enjoyed them a pretty uh, decent uh, start to this season, you know, don't forget, they're unbeaten since uh, the opening day. They're, they're unbeaten since the opening day of the Premier League season, so they haven't lost them um, in their last uh, five games. Don't forget, you know, on this fixture last season, West Ham did beat us uh, by uh, three goals uh, to one. So this is a game, obviously, we do know that uh, Manchester United do uh, need to uh, win. Um, West Ham have actually, you know, won two of their last four Premier League games um, uh, uh, at the London Stadium um, against us. But, you know, this is another statistic, you know, we've actually scored more Premier League goals against West Ham than any other side has um, in the competition. And we've only lost twice um, in our last uh, 21 uh, Premier League uh, meetings uh, with them. I think we we did beat them um, at Old Trafford, you know, 2-1 uh, last season. But, yeah, we do want to keep... Obviously, we do want to keep, um, you know, uh, this winning... We do want to keep winning games, obviously, so, you know, we can keep our hopes up, you know, uh, for uh, that top four. You know, we have won our last two um, on the trot in all competitions. We've won three in all competitions uh, so far uh, this season. Obviously, West Ham is our seventh game this season in all competitions and our sixth game, of course, um, in the Premier League. So, it's very, very essential, of course, you know, that Manchester United uh, do uh, win uh, the game. Uh, West Ham... Um I think they've got a couple of injuries. Um, I think they've got, you know, Winston Reid out of injury. I think they've got Mikel Antonio out of injury um, until January. And I think, you know, they have got um, Arthur Masaku uh, suspended. So, yeah, Man United have got to, you know, win uh, this uh, game uh, today. Um, and we haven't enjoyed um, a great uh, start to the season. Like I said, you know, it hasn't been the best, you know, to be quite honest with you. Know, I think, you know, it's not that we're particularly playing badly because you can already pinpoint some games out this season, you know, what really Manchester United should have won. You know, we should have won the Wolves game early on in the season. You know, we should have won, you know, the game away as probably Southampton, you know, early on um, in the season. So they're their they're games, you know, that we should have won that have obviously, you know, cost us points. Um, we arguably should have won the Crystal Palace game, reflecting on the amount of chances, you know, we had um, in that game. So we're not playing particularly badly. It's just that, you know, we're not being clinical enough in front of goal. You know, we do seem to be creating a lot of chances, but we're just not being clinical enough in front of goal. And obviously this seems to be the problem. This is something, you know, that Manchester United, you know, do uh, need to uh, justify. So... Yeah, so we've got to uh, win uh, the game today. And we have, you know, we're away from home and our away record's been really, really poor, poor recently. You know, we haven't won away from home since, you know, uh, we beat uh, PSG uh, last season. Obviously, you know, when we produced uh, that miraculous comeback. Obviously, that that's one of Oligan Solskjaer's now uh, most iconic moments um, as a manager. So, since then, we haven't won um, away uh, from home. And, you know, our away record, you know, has uh, been uh, really, really bad. Um it's been uh, really, really bad. But um, like I did say, I'm still uh, back in um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, all the way. Uh, the question is, you know, is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the revolution, you know, working at um, Manchester United? You, know, you know, quite a few people, you know, and pundits, you know, had um, a debate um, on that. You know, but I did say, you know, he's our fourth permanent manager, Solskjaer, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera. And like I did say, you know, we're not really known for the sacking club, despite the fact that three managers have already been sat in the football club since um, Alex uh, Ferguson, since the Alex uh, Ferguson and Marrera. And that we've had different managers with different flosses, but you know we haven't got uh, the structure uh, to keep uh, sacking our managers and I hope Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure at Manchester United you know, does uh, become uh, more successful uh, like I said I think we need to give him more time we need to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer more time you know don't forget he is still in the process of um, rebuilding this Manchester United squad you know I credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the aspect you know he did recommend you know three good players to the squad you know throughout uh, the course um, of the summer you know we spent over £140 million on Daniel James and Wan-Bissaka and of course uh, 
eye on Harry and Maguire. And we have seen glimpses of what good signings, you know, they've uh, proven to be uh, so far. Uh, I think Daniel James has been fantastic. And Wan Bissaki, you know, a lot of people believe, you know, he's been one of our most uh, consistent signings so far. And I do believe Am Wan Bissaki, you know, can be our fullback uh, for the next uh, decade. And Harry Maguire, I think um, he's addressed um, our uh, defensive deficiencies really, really well. So, like I said, if Am Wan Bissaka, Harry Maguire and Daniel James are all set, if they are all to continue the consistency up, you know, I think their valuation, you know, will uh, persistently uh, grow uh, in my, in my, uh, in my uh, opinion and that. But we do know that further more investment um, is needed in the squad, so it was good. In the aspect, you know, throughout the course of the summer, you know, that we did address, you know, some of the problematic areas, but we didn't address them um, all of the problematic areas. So, obviously, you know, we need to get at least one midfielder in in January or next summer because that midfield area is one of the priority areas, you know, where Manchester United do need to strengthen up. Don't forget, you know, throughout the course of the summer as well, we was um, in search uh, for the um, right winner. Uh, but, yeah, we definitely need to get a midfielder in because that midfield area is one of the priority areas where Man United need to strengthen up. And, you know, the vast majority of the blame does stem from the board because, you know, the board didn't recommend any sufficient attackers in or you know any uh, sufficient uh, midfielders in so you can blame uh, the board but I think the board did assure them at the start of the season you know that Solskjaer's job should be safe for at least this season so regardless of what happens this season Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job you know should be uh, safe because the board didn't back him enough you know throughout where the course of the summer you know as they did uh, presume so for me he needs backing in January and perhaps you know uh, needs uh, backing uh, next summer and now but we have got quite a few players in our agenda you know for maybe January um, and uh, next summer we do know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does want to continue with the policy um, of signing young British players uh, so I think we've got around five British players on our agenda uh, for next summer obviously we've identified James Madison and Jaden Sancho um, as our uh, number one uh, priority targets you know for their next summer and we are aware that you know they are going to cost the club you know a substantial amount you know Jaden Sancho is going to cost us in the excess of around £100 million pounds, you know James Madison is going to probably cost us around what um, you know around 70 or £80 million pounds. Uh, but we have got the financial power to meet that valuation because don't forget we're a massive club, you know, we've got massive revenues um, and we're obviously known, you know, for spending big on players and um, overpaying uh, for players and that, but definitely further um, more um, investment um, is needed in the squad. But I love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a lot, you know, he's a club legend, he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years, you know, he did uh, flourish um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance and that, and I did say now, I hope this team this day and age, you know, can replicate what the team did under Alex Ferguson, but I've got huge doubts um, about that. And I did say, regardless of our managers, you know, no one's going to ever follow Alex Ferguson's legacy, you know, no one, you know, we're never going to replicate, you know, what we did um, under um, Alex Ferguson and that. But, you know, and um, I just want Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure, you know, to uh, become uh, successful. Uh, obviously, you know, he hasn't really got the experience as a, uh, experience as a manager, you know, not really uh, to the highest level. So, obviously, you know, that's um, another uh, element um, of concern. Uh, but there's a lot of people, you know, that have uh, got uh, doubts um, about um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, A lot of people that have, you know, uh, got doubts um, about um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. Uh, but like I did say, you know, I think there's still more players, you know, that do need to uh, leave uh, Manchester United in January um, and uh, next summer. Despite the fact that, you know, that a lot of players have now left, you know, since um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. I think around, what, six or seven players have left, you know, don't forget. A couple of goalkeepers, you know, uh, went um, out um, on loan. But for me, you know, these are uh, still uh, problematic uh, players um, and that um, at the football club. Um... And I think those problematic players are, you know, Phil Jones, you know, I think he's one of the players that needs to leave Manchester United in January or next summer. Don't forget Phil Jones has been a long serving player but the football club, you know, Jones has been at Manchester United, you know, what, nine years now, has he? Well, eight years, this is ninth season, sorry, he's a Manchester United player. And we have seen glimpses of how good he can be, you know, um, over the years, but I think he's just too um inconsistent now. Obviously he's fallen down the pecking order anyway with the arrival um, of Harry uh, Maguire. Um so I think he's one player that needs to go in January next summer don't forget he signed a new long term contract last season um did uh, Phil Jones. Um, I think Marcus Rojo, um, he's another player that needs to be moved on in January um, or uh, next summer. You know, don't forget, uh, you know, Marcus Rojo was subjected to quite a bit of transfer speculation throughout the course of um, the summer. You know, don't forget Everton had inquired about getting him on deadline day. Um, obviously, we put around the £25 million pound valuation on him. Um, obviously, you know, AC Milan, Monaco and Marcelo also inquired about getting, you know, um, you know, um, you know, Marcus uh, Rojo. Obviously, he's, 
he does he is really first choice at Man United and like I said, you know, analysing the four odd years uh, I think this is now his fifth season at Man United, so I think he's been here four years, you know. He has been mainly inconsistent, but there again, you know, he hasn't uh, mainly been given the chance. Has sustained up get quite a few injuries as a Man United player Rojo, so I think he's also another player, you know, that does need to be ruled on. I think his versatility is good. He is primarily a centre back, but he can also apply as a left back, you know, and a wing back, you know, can uh, mark as a Rojo. So I think he's another player that needs to go. And in regards to Ashley Young, now we do know he's played in the last three games. Obviously started two of those two of those games, came on as a substitute, you know, um, in the win against FC Yastani in our uh, midweek and that. Obviously we know that Ashley Young uh, is no longer you know um, our first choice right back, but Young again's been a long serving player with the football club. Young has been here eight years. He's now into his ninth season at Manchester United, so he's nearly been here a decade. But I think you know he has passed his sell by date. He's young. Um, obviously it's reflecting on his age basically. You know he's now thirty four years of age. I think he's if I'm right, I think he's uh, 35 uh, next year. Um, he's actually young, um, but I think you know he needs to retire from football at the end of the season. Or if not, you know, just uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, either way. Um, and obviously, you know, we give him a new one year extension last season. Um, I think the man Matic, you know, he's a problematic uh, player um, at the football club, and that you know, I think we need to consider getting rid of him um, in January um, or uh, next summer. Don't forget, you know, me, there was a lot of reports circulating out of the media um, earlier on uh, this week saying that you know, up to four clubs, you know, were interested um, in signing uh, the man Matic, and those four clubs were reportedly Juventus, AC Milan, Inter Milan, and uh, Borussia Dortmund. So in that aspect, these are trio of Italian clubs interested. In him, and there's also you know German uh, club um, interested um, in Matic. Now we do know that Matic um, has got uh, well his current contract expires at the end of the season. We do have an option to extend his contract by a further year. Obviously, you know when we did get Matic uh, back in uh, 2017 from Chelsea, obviously you know we did uh, pay around uh, 40 million pounds from him and that, and obviously you know we he signed um, a three-year uh, contract uh, with an option of um, a further year, I think. Uh, but analysing you know his career at Manchester United so far, you know it hasn't been too good for him, you know to be quite. So what I mean in that aspect, you know, it has been mainly um, inconsistent. Uh, like I said, he's now into his third season at um, Manchester United, um, his Matic. Obviously, he is no longer first choice. He actually was uh, first choice uh, last season because our first choice midfield trio last season was Matic, Herrera and um, Paul Popper. And don't get me wrong, you know, I'll credit, I'll credit Matic um, in certain aspects that I think, you know, he's done well, you know, in, in, in parts of his Man United career. You know, there's some games, you know, where he has stepped up to the plate, his passing's been good and his distribution, that's been good. But, you know, he's just too slow. Law, and he does uh, make uh, that midfield uh, look totally um, imbalanced and obviously he's initially lost um, his place um, in the team anyway you know to uh, Scott McTominway um, as the man you Matic and I think Matic has given his overall analysis um, on this season so far and he is he has become infuriated uh, with lack of playing time we do know that Matic has actually started uh, the last two games in all competitions uh, but obviously you know that's you know due to the uh, absent, absence um, of Paul Popper that's only the reason that you know you know the man you Matic um, has uh, been um, involved but you know Matic is now uh, what 31 uh, years of age so we have you know got um you know he's a uh, major up and he's uh, getting uh, many younger and we not we haven't only got a lot of young players in the squad you know we have got a lot of um, experienced uh, players um, in the squad you know don't uh, forget um but yeah, I think we need to consider getting rid of Matic in January or next summer. Obviously, you know, it would be beneficial to try and cash in for him um, in January. But I think, you know, the, one of these four teams, you know, obviously all of them, you know, want to try and get him on a free transfer um, at the end um, of the season. Um you know, if you obviously we know that Juventus um, are known for getting players um you know in, on free transfers in recent years you know they did it with Van Ramsey obviously you know they did it with Adrian Mabiot um and they also you know did it with uh, Emre Can and that so I think you know us getting rid of Matic would be beneficial for him himself and the football club obviously Matic has made 90 appearances for Man United in all competitions and that um, I think 66 of those appearances um have uh, come um, in the Premier League but at the time we got Matic you know he wasn't our first choice um obviously he was our like our third choice and obviously we did get him back you know um, under the uh, Josie and Mourinho where and again you know Man United you know, did um, over a pay uh, for him so yeah I think he's another player you know that does uh, need to leave the football club but yeah, like I did say anyway you know I have got a lot of uh, element um, concerns um, about uh, my midfield um but you know, I think Matt Tomway, you know, has had a really, really good uh, start uh, to this to this season. Like I do keep saying, I don't know if he's got all the attributes to succeed as a Man United player. You know, I don't know if he if he, you know if he, I don't know, if, if, if in regards to him, you know, being the long-term solution for Man United, you know, I have got element um, of concerns about that, uh, but I think he's uh, done really, really well as Matt Tomway uh, this season, and I'm surprised he didn't keep his place 
in the 1-0 win um, over um, FC Estania, but I'll probably presume, you know, he will be uh, playing um, in the game uh, today um, against uh, West Ham. Um, but Tom Ware, I think, is only 22 years of age, so he has still, you know, got um, a lot of uh, development in him, but mainly so far this season, you know, he has been, um, you know, playing um, alongside uh, Paul Pobre um, in our uh, midfield. Um, Fred, you know, Fred, you know, maybe he will get given the chance uh, today, maybe won't start, but maybe, you know, should be involved um, in the game. Fred's been impressive in his last two games, I thought he was very impressive against FC Estania, um, um, was unlucky not to score. I thought it was also impressive, you know, when he did uh, come on um, against uh, Leicester. Fred again, I, I've got the same thoughts about Fred of what I've got of, of what I've got of Tomin. Where I don't know if he's a long-term solution for Man United. And these question marks around Fred, you know, can he uh, keep uh, the consistency up? But we do need to see more of Fred because you know the likes of Tom where Fred, even Pereira, Angel Gomez, even one of them um, are much uh, better uh, solutions uh, than the Man United. You know, let's be um, honest in that. Um, but yeah, even though we haven't had a great start to this season, I still think you know these are uh, players you know that have uh, performed uh, quite uh, well uh, for uh, Man United and that. Um... And uh, with regards uh, to uh, Paul Popper, uh, some news um, has come out um, about him. You know, I do uh, want to uh, give you um, an update on. Um... Uh, reportedly, you know, Man United are trying to uh, convince you know, Paul Popper to renew his contract term at Manchester United. Now, reportedly, um, I think you know we're keen on sitting down, you know, with Paul Popper's agent, Minnie Riley, and discussing um, a new contract uh, for uh, Paul Popper. Now, we do know Paul Popper's got two years left in his contract with Manchester United, as you all know, with an option, you know, to extend it by further year. And of course, Popper um, is on around uh, two hundred ninety grand a week. So obviously, in that aspect, he's uh, the highest, one of the highest played uh, players um, at the football club. Now, recently, you know. Paul Scholes, you know, came out and he gave his own right to view on, the Paul, on Paul Popper and that. And he says, you know, Man United losing Paul Popper, you know, wouldn't be a loss for the football club because he believes there's other players in the squad, you know, that can uh, perform their performer to his standards in that standards. I still believe Paul Popper does want to leave the football club as he did confirm uh, back in June, which was obviously earlier on this summer. You know, he did say he was seeking for a new challenge and, you know, he publicly admitted, you know, that he did, you know, uh, want to uh, leave uh, the football club. And there was quite there was quite a lot of teams in for Paul Popper throughout the course of summer. You know, it was Real Madrid that were relentlessly, you know, linked to him, but obviously Barcelona were linked to him. There was also talks about him going back to Turin because he did have four good years there with Juventus, you know, hasn't really re replicated this at Man United. Obviously, Obviously, the you know P reportedly PSG you know were tentatively uh, linked to him, so there was quite a few teams you know in uh, for uh, Paul Pogba. I did give you the reasons, the couple of reasons why I said Paul Pogba you know wanted to leave the football club and probably still wants to leave the football club because maybe he's frustrated with the lack of competitiveness. You know, maybe he does you know want to be uh, playing amongst better players, maybe wants to be in Champions League football and that. And you know, obviously you know he isn't getting this uh, Man United and that. So there be there the couple of reasons you know why he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, the football club. Um, but yeah, you know, if we could, if we could renew his contract, you know, that would be a very very good um indeed. You know, if Paul probably you knows to commit his long term future in Man United, and if he is, you know, to sign a new long term contract, obviously he'll demand to be the highest player player at the football club. So he will want a massive increase in his wages. An estimated guess, I think Pop uh, would be looking for somewhere in the region of around four hundred thousand pounds a week, you know, maybe even half a million pounds a week if he's to commit um, his long term uh, future uh, with Manchester United. Um. But like I said, it actually said, you know, I did ask, you know, they had the big part to play in, you know, Paul Pobby, you know, staying um, at the football club this summer, you know, reportedly, um, I did ask, wanted Paul Pobby to stay at the football club, you know, because they believe um, it's better for them uh, commercially and that. But I do believe that Paul Pobby's agent, you know, Mini Raleola, is, is, I think, has held negotiations, you know, with Man United, you know, regarding Pobby's future and over the possibility um, of renewing um, his contract um, at Manchester United. Um, obviously, Paul Pobby's 26 years of age, so he has still got um, a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him. And Zinedine Zidane, you know, will be infuriated. You know that he didn't get Paul Popper throughout the course of summer because don't forget Zinedine Zidane identified Paul Popper um, as his uh, number one uh, priority uh, target. Also, Christian Eriksen was on Real Madrid's agenda, uh, but obviously, you know, Real Madrid's preference was Paul Popper um, over uh, Christian Eriksen. If Paul Popper is to renew his contract, then I think Real Madrid will, you know, I've got an alternative. He's to probably Their alternative will be to probably go get Christian Eriksen on a free transfer um, at the end of the season because don't forget Christian Eriksen has got under a year left on his contract, uh, you know, with uh, Tottenham and that. Um, but Zinedine Zidane, you know, will be infuriated, but Real Madrid did spend a substantial amount throughout the course of summer, you know, they spent around, what, £300 million on five players, you know, they did generate some of the money back, because they did manage to um, offload uh, quite um, a few uh, players, but I think, you know, the, the, stum the, uh, the stumbling blocks, Paul Popper's move 
So the stumbling block of Paul Popper's move to Real Madrid, you know, throughout uh, the course of the summer anyway, was reflecting on the substantial amount we put on him because, you know, we quoted out that wanted somewhere in the region of around 179 or 100 or 180 million pounds earlier on in the summer. And obviously, you know, Real Madrid uh, were not willing to pay that. I still think, you know, we are demanding more or less the same as what we demanded early on in the summer if we are to let Paul Popper go um, in January. So if Real Madrid are willing to pay around 179 million pounds for Paul Popper in January, then we will soften um, our stance on Paul so in that aspect we are demanding nearly more than double than what we paid for him if you went us back in 2016 because don't forget you know we did pay 89 million pounds for him obviously um, he is uh, my uh, most um, expensive uh, sign but Paul Popper now is into his fourth season as a Manchester United player you know since he rejoined you know from Juventus uh, back in uh, 2016 and that uh, obviously he's won the Europa League and the League Cup of us that came in his second season now with Man United and with, like I did say Pop um, has missed uh, the last um Pop it as a, I think, uh, Mr. Last, is it two or three games for Man United now? No, he's missed uh, the last two games, I think, uh, as Paul Pop. Yeah, he's missed uh, the last two games. He's obviously not going to be uh, missing uh, today's game because he has he is uh, out uh, with an ankle injury. So I'm hopeful that Pop, uh, uh, you know, can be back for the game um, against probably Rochdale midweek in the Galpeo Cup or the game um, against Arsenal um, at the end um, of this month. Um, and so I've got the same thoughts um, about um, Anthony and Martial. But the good news is Pop is staying anywhere, you know, at least um, until uh, January. I'm glad we've convinced him to remain at the football club, especially with our failure to land a midfielder in, you know, for our the car some of the summer um, there was a lot of talk about Paul Popper leaving last year so since he rejoined from Man United he has been subjected to a hell of a lot of transfer speculation but you know there was rumours about him leaving last summer obviously with the bad relationship um, he had there with Jose and Mourinho you know they didn't have a great relationship and Paul Popper got, Paul Popper got one of his best wishes of course you know when Jose and Mourinho uh, got uh, sat there from the football club but Paul Popper's one of the best midfielders in the world you know when he's at his best you know you, we mainly do see uh, the best of Popper you know when he's uh, freed up and that um, with Anthony Mar Marshall, he's out with a thigh injury, um, as you all know, um, he's missed the last three games, um, as uh, Anthony uh, Marshall with injury, he missed Southampton, you know, um, he missed uh, Leicester, and of course, um, he missed um, FC um, Astania, you know, did uh, Anthony uh, Marshall, and like I did say, you know, before he sustained the, sustained the injury, I think he's had a pretty uh, decent uh, start to this season, I said, you know, if he can avoid any more injuries, and he can keep the consistency up, I think he can score from at least between 15 to 20 goals this season, confirmed at the start of this season, you know, obviously that Marshall uh, has been uh, giving her uh, that number nine shirt, so he's playing, you know, more centre this season, uh, they are compatible in that aspect to Marshall and Rashford, you know, because they can both play centrally, you know, they can both play out wide, but Marshall seems to be more effective in that central position, as that did get proven, you know, throughout pre season. Marshall's now into his fifth season as a Manchester United player. You know, Marshall um, has scored 50 goals for the football club now in our competitions. He scored his 50th goal against, you know, Wolves um, early on um, in the season, did Anthony uh, Marshall and that. Uh, but yeah, he's into his fifth season now as a Man United player. And what I've seen of him so far this season before he sustained the injury, I think. He's replicating, you know, what he did in his debut season under Louis Van Gaal era. Because don't forget, we got Marshall under Louis Van Gaal era. We got him as a 19-year-old, and I think he's got like what 17 goals in um, his uh, debut uh, season. But a lot of things have improved about Marshall's game. You know, he's getting more than runs in behind. Um, his penetration's good. You know, he's finished. He's got that finishing asset now. Still hasn't quite emulated that level as yet, but I think you know he will. You know, will Marshall? You know, he's only 23 years of age. He's developing really, really well. Don't forget, he signed a five-year deal uh, back um, in January. So yeah. Being very, very impressed there with him. Uh, with him regards to Marcus Rashford now, I don't, he hasn't obviously, he hasn't been bad this season, you know, as people make it out. You know, he obviously hasn't performed to the same sort of extent as our Marshall, James, and Wan Sack and Harry Maguire's uh, performed in that. Uh, and there definitely is still improvements, you know, needed um, in Marcus uh, Rashford's uh, game. You know, don't forget, he's played centrally, you know, um, in the last uh, two league games. Obviously, he has been uh, fulfilling uh, Anthony uh, Marshall's role. Um, but I'd still say Rashford is definitely a long term solution for Man United, even though he hasn't uh, been uh, too uh, good uh, this season. He, despite that, he has scored three goals so far this season obviously has a missed um, penalty uh, this season um, as Marcus Rashford but like I said so far he has spent the entirety of his career uh, with Manchester United whether he spends the entirety of his entire uh, rest of his career now from now with Man United um, I'm not too uh, sure about that um, but teams have obviously you not know, been in for Rashford um, in the past you know at one point Real Madrid went in, Real Madrid went in for him don't forget you know um, also you know Barcelona um, and that uh, were in for him um, but yeah you know Rashford you know definitely you know, does uh, need to um, improve <laughs> Um, in regards to Jesse Lingard now um, I think you know he could be playing uh, today Jesse Lingard don't forget now um, he has uh, recovered uh, from that illness obviously he didn't play um, 
against you know FC Stanley. I think he did come on as a substitute though, but didn't uh, start the game. Um, obviously, you know Jesse Lingard hasn't enjoyed um, a great uh, start uh, to this season now. But again, I still say um, he's uh, the long-term uh, solution uh, for Man United. I think now Lingard's what 27, you know, uh, 28 uh, years of age, so he is um, available, you know, where uh, to play uh, today. Uh, like I said with Luke Shaw, you know, he should be back for the game against Arsenal. He's been out of hamstring injuries, Luke Shaw. He's also missed uh, the last three games, you know, like uh, Anthony uh, Martial. Um, Luke Shaw, you know, is a very imperative player for Man United. Obviously, he is our first choice left back. Obviously, you know, reflect on his impressive performances uh, last season. You know, Luke Shaw, you know, did win uh, the double uh, player of the season. Analyzing the majority of his Man United career, you know, I think he's been uh, mainly uh, consistent. He's had some rough patches um, as uh, Luke Shaw's a Man United player. You know, he had the bad spell under Mourinho. Obviously, you know, he's sustained quite a few injuries as a Man United as a Man United player. But I think prior to that, you know, he's been um, absolutely uh, sensational as Luke Shaw. And we do know the difference he makes on that left hand side. You know, when he's um, at his uh, best and that. But yeah, he's out with hamstring injury. We know Eric Bay is a long term absence. I think he's out until uh, you know the end of the uh, the end of to the end of December um, or uh, the new year. Um, obviously, you know um, Fossil Mentor um, is a long term absence. Obviously, you know he's another young upcoming player. You know Lee Grant um, is out with uh, injury. So we've had quite a few injuries. So in that aspect, obviously Oligan Solskjaer guys had to make alterations and that. Um, I think you know the game against Rochdale um, on, at midweek um, in the Cowbell Cup. I think in that particular game is another opportunity. You know, for Alligan and Solskjaer, you know, to go more with the youth. And obviously, in that game, anyway, we'll rest certain players, obviously, for the game against uh, Arsenal uh, next week. Obviously, you know, that's what um, Alligan and Solskjaer, you know, is uh, currently uh, going to do. So, yeah. So, obviously, you know, we are... Um, um, We are looking uh, for um, our third win um, of the Premier League season. We are looking for um, our fourth win um, in our competitions and that. But yeah, like, like I did say, now we do uh, need to uh, go on a winning run. Because I did say at the start of this season, our expectations this season, you know, will be to finish in that top four. Um, and, and maybe perhaps win some silver. And I did say, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has got to um, exceed uh, these um, expectations and that. <coughs> But I said at the end of last season, and I did say at the start of this season that, you know, our expectations this season won't be to win the league because we're not analysing our squad, you know, it isn't good enough, you know, to win the league or even challenge for the league. And I don't even think we're going to win the league at least in the next, what, two to three years, something like that. But our expectations this season will be to finish in that top four because obviously, you know, we do want to uh, obviously, you know, get back home um, into the Champions League and that. Uh, and I did say, you know, with our failure to qualify for the Champions League, you know, that did go against us in the summer transfer window, you know, of getting all the players, you know, that we did want to recommend in because I did. I say quite a lot of players, you know, would have had reservations about, you know, joining uh, the football club, you know, if I fairly had to qualify uh, for the Champions League. But I did say, you know, we'll reflect on the amount of money that has been spent in the last, what, six to seven years, uh, in the last six to seven years, reflect on the amount of money that's been invested into the football club. And obviously, you know, with the dimension the history of this football club, we are, we are aware that, you know, we should be much more of a commanding position, you know, than winning uh, now. But our aspirations, I believe, you know, will be uh, that top four in the next couple of seasons. And obviously, Solskjaer, you know, wants to, you know, he wants to get Manchester United, you know, back to being competitive and winning trophies. And he wants he wants to be in that fear factor and that winning, and that winning mentality back to the football club. And these are all the things Solskjaer wants to have been uh, back to Manchester United. I know a lot of people um, have got uh, doubts about it, but I think I just think he uh, needs uh, more time. You know, see who he can get in in January. Maybe perhaps you know see who he can uh, get in uh, next summer. Because Solskjaer did say earlier on this summer, you know, he does want to recommend you know five. Uh, well, he did say before he got the three players in, you know, he wanted to recommend you know at least five new additions to the squad. You know, we did get that summer clear out. You know that we demanded, which was really really good. Um, but it was a shame that we didn't recruit with replacing Fernando Herrera and Marion Fellaini. That was a shame, you know, to be quite honest, because we needed re needed a replacement for Herrera and Fellaini. You could arguably say that under Herrera, you know, was one of our best players since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Herrera. Um, obviously, he's, he had five successful years at Man United. I think the majority of his career he did really, really well. Did Herrera was mainly consistent. Uh, Fellaini served six years um, at the football club. He was uh, mainly inconsistent. So I'm glad he left him um, in January. Um, Obviously, you know, um, we didn't. We obviously, you know, we didn't recruit um, replacement uh, for Romelu Lukaku. You know, which was um, obviously you no know, um, a disappointment and that stuff for me. These still deficiencies um, in the squad. You know that uh, do uh, need to be um, addressed. But you know, analysing it, you know, the majority um, of this squad um, is not um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's um, anywhere. You know, obviously, you know, he's still inheriting a lot of players here from the Jose Mourinho era. You know, just under four hundred million pounds was spent under Jose Mourinho. Um, 
Obviously, you know, he still didn't have him plays either than Louis van Gaal have ever. You know, over £200 million was spent under him. You know, obviously, you know, he still didn't have it in Matt Reefen and David Moyes have ever. And it's around £67 million was spent under, you know, the David David Moyes have ever and that. So, I think we spent nearly... Uh, an estimated guess, I think we've spent nearly around £900 million, pounds, something like that, in the last uh, six um, or seven years. If you want to take into account, obviously, you know, the, what was spent um, under Alex Ferguson, obviously, you know, we have spent, you know, way, um, you know, over um, a billion uh, pounds and that. Obviously, now we've got players um, on big contracts as well, you know, don't uh, forget. Um, so, it just, you just, you know, proves, you know, always spending big on players and getting them glad to go players, you know, doesn't um, always, you know, uh, guarantee you uh, success. And it's been proven with Man United um, in the last uh, six um, or uh, seven uh, years, but... But like I said, despite that we've been a toxic club for the last six or seven years, you know, we are still one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, we are the most successful team in England, you know, historically, you know, won 13 Premier League, you know, obviously seven all first divisions. So we've won 20 uh, titles, you know, we're more than um, in all. And, you know, obviously the club's greatest achievement, obviously, you know, came back in 1999, of course, when we did win the treble. That was obviously one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's iconic moments um, as a player for Manchester United and that. Um, <coughs> um but um, yeah, so a hell of a lot of money's been invested into the football club. You know, Solskjaer's been Man United manager, you know, obviously since December last year. Well, obviously, he served three months um, as the interim manager um, at the football club. And in that three-month period, you know, he did really, really well. You know, the results were good. The performances were good. He got the best out of these group of players. And he exceeded their um, expectations. But it just seems, seems to me, since he got the job in March early on this year, you know, it has just seemed to have uh, all gone wrong, uh, basically. But I think, you know, Manchester United, you know, do uh, need to argue in town. I know a lot of people saying, you know, he won't uh, last them um, and um, the football club don't get me wrong as well you know some of his some of his uh, tactics um, are questionable um, I do know that um, for a fact um, but yeah so I think you know the 11 that you know Probably Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, is going to uh, he's going to go with her uh, today. You know, probably David De Gea is obviously not going to be back in there. Obviously, when Mario played in goal uh, midweek, and obviously, you know, Solskjaer went with Mario against FC Estonia because you know he's in he's, he's going on the experience because Romero's got the experience of you know you know playing, you know, in like, you know, cup competitions and that, and he does seem to be quite impressive in the cup games and that, but it will be De Gea that will be play, uh, being goal today, uh, Man Wan Bissaka at right back, obviously he was rested midweek, it'll be Harry Maguire and Vitz Lindloff as our, as our centre-back partnership obviously that's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first choice and I think you know, they've blended in fantastically well together so far, um it probably you know will be uh, probably Diego Dalla at left back or it will be um, Ashley Young um, at left back or should be Zoom. Uh, the midfield, I think he'll probably go with a 4 2 3 1. I could go with a 4 3 3. I said he'll use that 4 2 3 1 formation on a regular basis this season. I think in that midfield now, uh, obviously this is just my prediction, but I think he'll definitely. He, with Fred, do I think he'll start Fred? He could start Fred, you know, to be um, quite honest with you. Um, I think he could actually even start um, Joe Gomez. It is a tough one, but I think that Tom Wayne you know, will now get back into the team for this game. You know, he didn't play at uh, midweek. I think that Tom Way will be in that midfield. Um, I think, you know, maybe um, Angel Gomez, you know, will get um, given him a chance as well. So I think it'll be. Probably, you know, it could be McTomway and Emmanuel Matic in that midfield, or, you know, it could be, you know, if it is a 4 2 3 one, it could be, you know, McTomway um, and Fred in that midfield. I'm going to go with McTomway and Fred um, in that midfield. Then I'm going to go with the three attackers, you know. Daniel James may not be available, so. It, if it may not be available, you know Daniel James, you know to be quite honest, with you, but I'd say if Daniel if if he's not available, then I'll probably say you know I don't know to be quite honest, with you. probably say um, if he's available, say Daniel James on the left, probably say you know. Um, Jesse, probably Jesse Lingard um, on the right, you know, maybe one matter in the number 10, and uh, probably, you know, Rashford um, up top, um, I should uh, presume, that is uh, the 4 2 3 one formation. Now, you know, that's just me predicting, you know, what, you know, starting level, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, could uh, go over in that, but yeah, Man United, um, I've got to uh, win uh, the game uh, today. Um, it is a 2 o'clock kickoff, by the way, um, at the London Stadium and that. Um, obviously, you know, I saw some of the results yesterday, you know, Manchester City, you know, beating Watford, you know, by uh, 8 goals uh, to nil. obviously, you know, bounce back from their defeat uh, to Norwich uh, last week because they did lose a uh, three two uh, to Norwich, you know, did uh, Manchester City. Um but um yeah, this is a game, you know, Manchester United, you know, do um have to uh, win in that. Uh, like I did say, even if we're not competing for the top four by January, you know, I still think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job, you know, should be uh, safe in that. But we've got to get, you know, back um, into the uh, Champions League. Um obviously there was good news that came out earlier on this week, as you all know. 
have in regards to Victor Lindelof and that. Obviously, we do know he signed a new long-term contract at Manchester United, you know, which is a uh, very, very good news. Uh, Lindelof signed um, a five-year deal with an option of a further year, which I'm very, very um, happy about. So he's the second player this week to commit his long-term future at the football club because David De Gea um, on Monday, earlier on this week, um, had signed um, a new long-term contract there with the football club and that. But I'm glad, you know, Lindelof signed a new long-term contract. He is the long-term solution for Man United. And I do believe he's flourishing um, as a Manchester United player um, he's a uh, Victor uh, Lindelof. Um, he's in now. To, he's in his third season now as a Man United player. You know he hasn't been. Well, I think he's done okay this season. You know he was a bit below par in the game against Southampton. Um, and uh, Crystal Palace, he was par in them two games. But I think he stepped up um, against uh, Crystal uh, against. Um, Leicester, to be quite honest, you know, did, uh, you know, a bit to uh, Lindelof. And I think mainly so far this season, he's replicating what he did in his second season because I thought Lindelof was really, really good in his second season. We paid just over £30 million for him uh, from, you know, Benfica back in 2017. This was obviously under the Jose and Mourinho or uh, Moreira. Vince Lindelof wasn't so good in his first season, lacked that consistency and that didn't really settle in. But I think, you know, he's done really, really well uh, so far uh, this season, mainly. And he has blended in, along he has blended in, blended in alongside Harry Maguire, you know, uh, fantastically well um, as Lindelof. Uh, um, and he's, what, 25 years of age. He has made 74 appearances for the club um, in all competitions. So I'm glad he's committed his long-term uh, future uh, with Manchester United. But uh, And I'm happy with the news about David De Gea. Uh, but we have, we, have give, you know, we have now sorted a lot of contract renewals out. And we have given quite a few players you know, new contracts you know, that were in their last years of their uh, current uh, deals. Don't forget, we did it with Martial. You know, we did it with Rashford. You know, we did it with you know, Juan Mata um, early on um, in the summer. So it's good you know, that we've done that um, in that um, aspect. So very, very happy about that. Um... And we do know that, you know, Italy has been a very popular destination, you know, this summer for the vast majority of our players because, uh, you know, most of our players that have left have obviously, you know, gone to Italy, you know, Smalling went to Roma on loan, Diamond permanently, you know, went to, uh, you know, Parma, um, obviously, you know, Sanchez and Romano Lukaku, of course, you know, went to Inter Milan, so in that aspect, you know, they are uh, reuniting together, so we have loaned uh, quite um, a few uh, players um, out, you know, uh, don't uh, forget, um, but despite the fact Chris Smalling leaving, you know, we have still got, what, you know, uh, six uh, centre-backs um, in the team, you know, uh, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> but I'd said, you know, despite the fact that a lot of players have left, you know, I still think, you know, there is more players, you know, that definitely you know, uh, do uh, need to uh, leave uh, the football club. So, wanted to, just wanted to give you the breaking news that came out yesterday. Mason Greenwood has been dropped from the Man United squad, so it means in that aspect, you know, he hasn't travelled to London with the rest of his Man United teammates, um, so he will not be playing. Also, too, you know, Pogba and Marshall are not there, neither um, is Luke Shaw, because obviously, you know, they're uh, injured and that. Um, but um, yeah, so we know today that Pogba won't be playing, Martial won't be playing, Mason Greenwood now obviously know won't be playing. Daniel James has a 50-50 chance he could be involved, we're not too sure about him. Um, but um, yeah, so anyway guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. Um, if you do, consider a subscribe, um, as always, and take care, God bless, bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.